You're watching the Kate Fox Show. I'm Kate Fox. And tonight I am speaking with, oh boy, I mean, rock star Todd Howarth. And hi, Todd. No, you're not seeing me. Oh, <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you? That interview or that introduction, actually, uh, as a rock star, and I appreciate that. I, uh, I think that's exactly what I'll be tonight. Well, you know what? It's, I mean, you have been working in music since the, since when? No, well, actually, uh, I was seven years old when I really started taking piano lessons, and I was singing before then. But I, I really started to uh, get into musical instruments, I guess, when I was about probably 11 or 12 on the piano. Um, well, I, piano was a long time. Guitar, I don't know, in my preteens, but uh, musically, professionally, probably since my uh, about 19. And I'm now 63 in September. So, wow, oh, that's coming, isn't it? Yes, it is. But wow, so since 19, and you have played with you played with 707. Yes. You played with Cheap Trick, Ted Nugent, Fraley's Comet, Four by Fate, uh, Return of the Comet. Mm -hmm. Most recently you did, and you you did right. a lot of, um, you did like the pre-Kiss Cruise, you did some Kiss Expos and stuff. We had, yeah, we had some shows. It was uh, actually a very good idea. John had the idea, John Regan. John had Regan. Had the idea to do this um, prior to a friend of ours getting us together and saying, this is something you guys should do. And uh, so we gave a shot last year, and uh, we had some momentum. Um, it didn't go as, as probably as powerfully as we wanted it to, but we gave it a shot and then we were kind of regrouping. And then of course the big cooties came out and just kind of knocked everybody out of the water. And we're in a holding pattern now. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. But let me tell you, you, you really, I saw you actually, it was about a year ago that you were out here on Long Island. Yes. Uh, well, you were out East, but a Long Island when I got to see you play and it was just, so great i mean such a great show it was a good show we that was the second part of uh we did about i think two different legs and a couple other shows but the, the second the last show uh, segment for me was personally was great the band was a lot uh, oh there's kate uh <laughs> the the band was a lot tighter um uh, i was singing like 100 percent, so i felt great you know i could just really you know just give them my all yeah. And you got to see that. I was I'm, I was glad that you got to see that show. That was the fire drill night, wasn't yes, it? Yes, that was the fire drill. We were actually going to sit down and talk that night. And just things yeah. kept happening and happening and happening. Right. And then all of a sudden the fire drill happened. Yeah. And they actually kicked us all out of the venue with, with yeah. people waiting to see you be, because yeah. of that. Right, right. So, But I did. Listen, I got to see you during intermission. Um, I got to meet your gorgeous girl. Thank you. Yep. Who, you know, it's funny. You, you, everyone says, oh, you know, oh, he's pretty. Oh, well, let me tell you, you are pretty and you have, she's prettier. No offense <laughs> yeah, to you. <laughs> no, she's, she's pretty stunning. She's, um, yeah, she's uh, two years younger than I am. She's an Italian, uh, you know, half Italian. Uh, and she's a corporate woman and, and she's yeah. very level headed, but very pragmatic. Um, and she's a workaholic as well. As a matter of fact, she's, I mean, she's, yeah, as a matter of fact, she worked out of Atlanta for th three years straight and just commuted home sometimes on the weekends. That's right. Uh, there a while back. But uh, yeah, she's, thank you. She's, uh, she takes care of herself and uh, she does pretty much all the right things. And uh, she's just, uh, she's been fortunate to be graced with the genetics that uh, make her, uh, you know, better looking than I am. Yeah. And I, I'm, uh, Far better looking than I am. <laughs> well, and, but let me tell you, you two make a striking couple. Thank you. I, you, Thank you, you just really do, and and I'm a big fan of of, of Val also because, um, well, she's just so classy. Yeah, she I, she is. I mean, she's straightforward, but she she uh, can be very classy, of course, and uh, she's dealt with a lot of people because she travels all over the world as well in her business. So, yeah, she does very well that way. Well, and you know what? I'm sorry. So now, I, since I left music for a minute and we're talking about family, I also have to mention that you have a celebrity in your home uh, yes. that has outshined you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, everybody's been trying to get me to get his own page, his own Twitter, and all this stuff. You know, and 
you know, like I, I don't have enough things on my plate. I got to do that too. But Alfie the white dog. Alfie the white dog. And Alfie is the sweetest little thing. And just, yeah. you really work that dog hard. Yeah, he's, man, he's sitting right over here working. I, I could, I could, uh, well, I could probably turn the camera to show you, but uh, it may screw up everything. But I'll you, take you a quick picture of him. <laughs> I love it. I love he's it. Such, he's such a daddy. Well, he actually used to be more of a daddy's boy. And now he's uh, he's all about mom because mom is home. Uh, so oh, so he's picture. spoiled. He's spoiled. Yeah. Plus, he's, he's getting a little bit older. And uh, his, his hearing and his vision is not that good anymore. But there, I don't know if you can see that. Can Probably we see not. it? We can. We can see a little. We can uh, see we, that little white fluff ball. Uh, yeah. It's I can. Hard to see. <laughs> He's staring at right at me. There's like two button eyes looking right at me. You know. <laughs> well, because he doesn't want to be bothered. He worked all day. It's you know it's five o'clock somewhere where you are because you're yeah. in San Diego. San Diego, right? And uh, so he doesn't want to be bothered now, Dad. No, right now it's like. Is that <laughs> Yeah, it's food time. So, but now, you know, so you've got the family thing going on. You're family man. You, you're the rock star. But you're also a gearhead. Yes. Big time. And I don't think, I'm sure, you know, your diehard fans know. But some people, I didn't realize it until I met you. And then, uh, you know, I, I, we follow each other on social media. And I see these things that you do. And holy God. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been... Called a long time ago, I was called a Renaissance man. I had no idea what that was until you know I, I looked it up. Uh, but I'm pro probably pretty much that I can do most anything and everything because I was taught to. I learned how to do it myself. I mean, my father was in the cars and that type of thing when I was younger, and he tore everything apart. And I was fascinated at an early age, like five or six years old, seeing this engine, you know, completely apart on the on the ground or the garage of my my dad's place and. I was like, what is all this? And so I learned how to do everything that involves, you know, uh, engines and even you know, manual transmissions and all that type of stuff. So, yeah. Well, and it's great. And it's it's something that, it, you know, people in, in our age group, if you will, that's what we did. We learned how to do those things. And it's funny because I look at my kids and they don't know how to do anything. And I'll even say to them, not that I'm, you know, I'm not a gearhead, but I changed my own oil. At there you least, go. You know, so I used to do that. And so when I see these things that you're doing, I'm just, my mind is blown. It's like, but you're oh, supposed thanks. to be a musician. You're not supposed to, what? You, what? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's very strange to me. I mean, a lot of people knew me in school as an artist because I, I, do, I do acrylic paints and, and, uh, and some oils, but mostly acrylics. And I like to do reflections and chrome and stuff like that. I was in advanced art classes when I was in school. Of course. And, and a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of friends... Uh, then when I meet up or see him, I haven't seen him like, you know, 30, 40 years, whatever. They go, oh, you still doing art? And I'm like, yeah, I'm, yeah, but I'm a musician. I'm, I, but yeah, I, I'm doing art. You know, they don't, they have no idea my career because, you know, they don't follow me. They're, they're old and they don't know what the hell's going on in my life. And, and I, I get that, you know, but uh, yeah, I, I do everything because I just always gravitated towards, I wonder how that's done. I'd like to learn. Yeah, it's like I learned how to ski when I was 30 years old because I was traveling so much. I learned how to ski. And then I wanted to snowboard, and I snowboard, but I was always roller skating and 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 ice skating when I was really young. So, you know, I just anything I see, like I'd like to try that or learn that or do that. So that's always I've always been. Well, that's really cool, and and because but then you never get bored, do you? Because you're constantly learning oh my something. God, no, no. I, I usually I I have to. The only time I slow down is when I'm either ill or I just can't stand anymore. Like like tonight I get done, I'll, I'll be doing some drum tracks for my solo CDs. And I'm going to rub it in the Rob of So how much better drummer than I am? Than oh, you? there you are, Rob. Oh, uh, there's but, a, uh, oh, fighting words. But, uh, so I'll, get, I'll do that. And then I'll go do some vocals and guitars. But, and I'm standing. And pretty soon my legs and feet go, look, old dude, it's nine o'clock. <laughs> go home or do something. You know, and so, yeah, I, I get exhausted. But I, I have a lot of energy. I uh, always have. And, uh, and thank goodness, because I'm just, I'm just uh, the only monkey in my own little circus. So. That helps. Well, you have a nice circus, though, and I, you know, I guess I should. All, I, I'm all over the place, but as as you're talking, I'm thinking of things, and I just looked, and of course, you're in your home studio that you built. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I built this from scratch. It's got. I did all electricity. I did all light. I, the uh, the air conditioning, the heating. It's all kind of like. Uh, yeah, it's only 200 square feet. It's very small. So you get another person here. It's like, oh, time, time for you to get out because right. I can't do anything. But it's it's also I built it for pre-production so I could sing 
and do some recording in here because my son lives in my big studio right now and has been for about five or six years. He went to college and got his uh, his uh, uh, his uh, uh, bachelor's degree, and then he got married. And now they're saving up for a house. So, but I, I like it here because it's very well insulated. And yes, I built it myself, and that damn near killed me too. Uh, well, you know, I haven't seen a picture of you lately with a gash in your hand or anything. So, you might oh, God. <laughs> you might be due. So just just be safe and be careful. Thank you. Thank you. But now, so you, okay, so you sing, you play guitar, you play keys, you play drums. Badly. Well, I don't know. Uh, well, it's, I, I, get, I get through it. It's actually, I play stuff. I, seriously, I send stuff to Rob and go, check this out. And uh, you go, gee, that's, that's not bad. And I said, yeah, yeah, much better than you do in your sleep, you know. But it's kind of fun. I can, I'm really a meat and potatoes guy. I used to play when I was a teenager for a while. Of course, I was, you know, horrible. Uh, and then... Once I uh, got into doing solo records, the first one I did, I had to use a drum machine, which was the, my uh, keyboard. Okay. And that was so labor intensive because you program that. It took me about 40 hours to do one song just to get it right. Wow. So I made myself brush up on the drums. And it actually took me about a year to get you know back into at least playing meat and potato stuff with you know, some tasty fills. And that's pretty much all I can do. But the whole point of doing solo records for me is, I mean, I do everything. It's a challenge. It's fun. It's not... Be I'm not tooting my own horn like, you know, look at me, look at me. It's just I can do it, so I'm going to do it. But Well, why uh, shouldn't you? Yeah. And, and well, the, this will probably be maybe one of the last things times I do it because it takes so long for me to learn the song because I hear it in my head. <sighs> you know, I hear how the drums are going in my head, and then I play it, and I go, you're fired. <laughs> you know, and then the next day I go, okay, I'll rehire you now, but you got to do it right, you know. So but you it, have it to takes take a long time. Wow. Wow. But luckily you don't have to, you know, pay yourself. So <laughs> <laughs> no, only in arthritis. And I'm like right now this, this back shoulder muscle is just killing me. I don't know. It must've been one of those sweet rolls I did yesterday, but uh, yeah, it, it takes a toll on me. I can only do about three or four hours in the studio because I'm doing everything. I mean, I'm engineering it, uh, oh, producing right. it, recording it before. And then after a while, like I'm just done. Yeah, well, that makes sense because how much can you do, really? You know, you have to come to a point where you're you're tired. You... Yeah, and this is after doing whatever day's work I'm doing. Sometimes it's more physical than others, and I can get away with doing more stuff. But yeah, it's, it's I can do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm doing three solo CDs right now. Three? One's heavy, yeah, one's heavy melodic rock, uh, kind of. It, well, it's very much me, with meets you know Van Halen, and Alice in Chains, Stone Temple Pilots type feel, but not. You know, it's still me, uh, and then I'm doing like an adult contemporary type feel where it's acoustical keyboards and um, and uh, acoustic piano and guitar, you know, acoustic everything, everything, orchestrations that type of thing. And then I'm doing um, uh, an acoustic CD uh, of just the songs that I did on uh, for Fairly's Comet, me singing and oh. the ones that I wrote and sang. Just kind of as a bonus CD. It's not going to be, I'm not going to sell it, but you can only get it when you purchase the other two, uh, the albums. And then I'm also working on my autobiography, which is taking forever. I started almost uh, two years ago. Um, but it's, I'm trying, I was hopefully one release at the end of this year, but it's going to be probably the, the beginning of next year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I remember talking about that a couple of years ago. So <laughs> you, <Yeah. laughs> well, but. Okay, so are you a writer? Because you know, I know you're a songwriter. I I write short stories as a hobby. Mm -hmm. I always have because I I, I love I read extensively um, all kinds of different books, um, and I but I I like fiction uh, the best for for the imagination aspect of it. So I write in a very amateurish way. Uh, but I can do some, I, I let some people read some of my pages and they go, wow, this is, this is damn good. You know, I said, well, I think it's good enough to get it, you know, to do an autobiography, to tell, you know, all the stuff that I've gone through and the, the way the book is threaded, it's all about music. When my first started getting influenced by music and then it goes into my first cover band and, and that type of thing. And then into my big band. My, my wow. first big band, which was 707. 707. And then it goes to the, the, everything I was doing successfully. And then when it dropped off, everything fell to crap. 
and then and then it went up. You know, I went back with Nugent, and then back after you know back in the dumps uh, with and Nugent. I don't... That was Ted Nugent. Yeah, Ted yeah. Nugent. Ted Nugent, <laughs> and then it was it was seven oh seven. Ted Nugent, Cheap Trick, Cheap Trick, Fraley's Comet, back to Cheap Trick, uh, then uh, Four by Fate, Return of the Comet, and I played with Cheap Trick probably longer than anybody I played with uh, uh, over the years. And it goes through, and I don't pull any punches. I tell you exactly what happened. Uh, it's in the book, like, right after Fairly's Comet. I mean, I, I was, you know, I had a house and two, three young kids. And uh, I was going through, actually, <laughs> a divorce and oh. a nightmare of a thing. That's in the book as well. well. I'm not sure how much I touched on that in the book. But <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it talks about how I, you know, when, when Fairly's Comet was still huge and popular, I was unloading uh, 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 semi vans with furniture and Girl Scout cookies to pay the bills. I mean, I was I was struggling. Wow. I, I mean, it was really bad. Yeah. Well, you and, know. And, sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Well, it's just real. It was real difficult. And and I'm I, I, I'm not I don't I don't pretend that everything's been you know roses because it certainly hasn't been. Uh, I, I tell the truth about everything that I talk about. Uh, because it, it just, it's just so much easier to remember the truth, but uh, <laughs> if you can remember anything, but it's it's just it's it just it really di- dictates you know my life and my experiences, my perseverance as you know blue blue collar musician, mm-hmm. what I am. Well, and you know it's it's funny. I, I want to come back and talk about you know the the, the band some more and, and how people can find your stuff. But something that you just said, and I've I've had this conversation with many people that. I'm rock star or what it does as a musician and it's getting more so as, as the, as time passes, as we get in, as we go on. But I have found that no matter what caliber musician you are, the, the people that I know, no matter what you've achieved, whether you have a Grammy, whether this, whether that you need to work still. Yeah. It's not like, Oh, everybody's here. Let me peel off some hundreds. Yeah. You work a long, hard day as a musician, but you also work other hard days bringing in some extra money because it's not all, oh, here's my chateau in France. And people don't realize that. No, I mean, I, I just, uh, my wife and I, Valerie, just, we just bought our condo. It's the first home I've ever owned. We bought a condo, uh, was it uh, about uh, 11 years ago, 10 years ago? And because, you know, my, my, everything for me was, I pursued music, right? I, I got out of high school. That's my yearbook said, what's your future? And mine said music, period. That was it. And I think, and I wanted to chase it. And I did. And I busted my butt. Uh, and doing that, you know, life was really tough. And, and I had to stretch every penny that I could. And I worked my butt off at everything. Sometimes I'd have uh, two or three jobs just to keep up the musical thing going. Wow. And this is even into when I was a, a musical personality. Uh, you know, the, the music has paid off well here and there, but then it drops off like a rocket as well. Right. And I, you know, I wasn't, you know, part of Motley Crue of Van Halen where, you know, the royalties came in, I could sustain myself. If you manage your money, right. I had <laughs> to manage my money, right. From a day gig, just so I could do my musical stuff, like playing for Cheap Trick or Nugent. Right. I mean, Nugent, Ted Nugent is very frugal and very business businessman oriented because he had to make things work from tour to tour to tour. And that's where I learned this is how it's really done. Oh. I mean, I've, I've been through a lot of examples with all my bands and the financial ruins, and every band has had some type of financial ruin, with exception to Nugent. Ted no, knew how to do stuff. Sorry, I'm pointing with drumsticks. That's- um, and Cheap Trick managed their money and, and very well as well. Um, I mean, they, they I mean, it was managed for them, and of course they had a handle and a great handle in making their own decisions. So, but you have to do that if you want to keep out, stay out there, and keep things going. Right. Uh, it, it's really difficult. I mean, I have struggled greatly, and yeah, I, I do day jobs. Uh, I mean, fortunately, my family's involved in, in commercial re- real estate. Uh, in the same area for since the the 60s, the early 60s. And what my father had invested in, I now manage and take care of. And I, I've been fortunate, uh, but it, it it isn't like I come and sit in an office. I mean, I sit in my office either freezing or sweating. And like just a year and a half ago, I did 28,000 square feet of roofing that I had to do under this very thing that I'm sitting right now. 
and other buildings. And I, it took me a year and a half to do it myself, but I saved our, our family over a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. And I did it myself, but you know, yay me, but it needed to be done. And I needed to do it because that's how I financed my four by fate, my solo records. You know, I mean, I like toys. My boat didn't come free. <laughs> you, you know, my Jag didn't come free, you know, and the Harleys, uh, they're not free either for some reason. Johnny knows that. <laughs> Johnny does know that. Johnny knows Harleys are not free. Yeah, they're not. He's, he's going. They're expensive. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, yeah, so you, but you, you do what you have to do. And that's right. really what it comes down to. And, and that's a good thing that you, you show, you show this with everything that you do. You, you know, you work hard, you play hard. You, you, you do what you need to do. I try to make that real clear on on uh, you know, on the social media stuff because it, the social media for me it's not just music for me. If I was to do that, I would do just a music thing, which I may do. Uh, my website's being rebuilt now. My son's working on it. He's oh. a brilliant artist, so that's why it's been kind of down now. I haven't rebuilt it because I got all this new stuff I want to do. But on social media, I do. I interject all things like you know we go to Lake Havasu. I go skiing, mm -hmm. snowboarding. Uh, I go water uh, snow uh, wakeboarding. Uh, off-roading and all the stuff I do, I have to work very hard to do it. Like I'm going to Sturgis here next week and yes. that's going to be a pretty penny. But you know, the wife and I have saved for it. And we, and matter of fact, we paid for a lot of stuff last year so we can afford to do it this year. Oh. And it's all a matter of planning. You know, it's not just, Hey, I'll just uh, show out the cash <laughs> and we go. It's just it's the way it works. Cause that's not the way it works. You know? It's <laughs> But the way the way you're showing it is how it really works, and that's that's the best thing to show. Yeah. And it's true. You put everything out there. You put snippets of your life, no matter mm -hmm. what it is you're doing, um, and and you give a nice picture of of the fact that you know, yeah, I'm playing music or I'm this or I'm that, but I'm also doing this too, and I love right. this and I love that and I have fun, but I work hard, and that's just a a yeah, good it, picture. It, it's a balance. It really is a balance because a lot of people, sometimes people say, oh, it must be nice. Says, well, actually, you know, it's, it's, it's very nice because I work for it. And I don't mind saying that, you know, and, and sometimes people, you know, snarkiness gets lost in translation, especially when people don't know how to punctuate when they type, you know, but um, I sometimes I'll, I'll listen and see things and I'll read it a certain way. I go, OK, well, this is this way because of that. Like they don't realize that I have, I have my Jaguar now, which I bought used because I sold my sand rail but I took care of my sand rail for 10 years and got the most money back out of it. And before that I had a big block Corvette for 26 years that I redid twice, which I sold to get the sand rail. So I transfer funds and assets and, and um, equity of, of things into other things. That's why I like my Steinberger guitars and I invest in those because I, I'm, hoping they'll be a good investment sometime in the future. Right. Well, you have one or two guitars. So. Yeah, one or two, 18. <laughs> wow. Steinberger's alone. And then these oh two God. things here, these are baritone guitars that uh, Tom Peterson introduced me to back when I was playing a lot with Cheap Trick, and they're phenomenal instruments. But, yeah, I mean, I don't, I just, just a couple, the Steinberger guitars is what I invest in, and a few other guitars, and electronic stuff, not a chance. <laughs> Wow. On that note, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Okay. Hey, I'm Rob Rush and you are watching the Kate Fox Show. For those that are in the know. I don't know how it comes through. But... Well, we can hear it and you can have you? a guitar in front of you. It's a, yeah, an old Fender... Uh... Fender uh, acoustic bass, which I love this thing. It sounds monstrous on oh, a couple of wow. songs. I just love this thing. It's just phenomenal. That's really cool. And obviously we're back. And I'm talking yeah. with Todd Howarth. And he's playing a little bit on his guitar, on his acoustic bass. Acoustic bass. And um, that's, of course, he's in the studio that he built. And Todd, okay, so we said 707. Uh, Cheap Trick, Ted Nugent, Fraley's Comet, 4 by Fate, Return of the Comet. How many solo records do you have? Good question. I think I have five out right now. Um, I, let's see. Uh, what was that? Somebody dropped something? That was my producer. <laughs> he just fell, I think. All right. So what I'm going to 
So you have five out right now, you think? Yeah, I, I think it's five. Uh, let's see, Silhouette, um, Cobalt Parlor, uh, Winter, uh, West of Eight, Ops of Gods. And I did a um, solo single, and I had a, a fan friend of mine, Brian Sword, did a, a video. He's out of Canada. And he came down, and he wanted to do a video of me I'm doing my desert stuff, and that's the one with the, um, uh, the, the sand rail. Oh, I've but, seen that. Yeah. I've seen that one. Yeah. That's a good one. It's a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. I had uh, actually had uh, my old drummer from my local band here, Bob Sale, uh, do the drums, and he's a monster. And I had uh, one of my guitar players uh, from my local bands when I was in Cheap Trick, and I also had local bands here, uh, Jeffrey Marshall. He did the real fast lead because he's a phenomenal player. And uh, but that was a lot of fun to do that. But yeah, five solo, solo records, solo CDs, and I'm again working on three right now. And I'm just uh, I'm, I'm busy as can be. You you really and you know you mentioned we keep saying cheap trick, but you just was it last year you actually played with them when they were in your area. They called you up and said, hey, come play the show. Yeah, usually when they're down here, they'll. <laughs> Lately, they've been calling me day of show. Wait, hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm, you know, I'm on the roof working on whatever. What are you coming down to see the show? I said, that's right. You guys are here. Yeah, yeah, I'll come down. It's a, and then all of a sudden, there's silence. And all of a sudden, here, you want to bring a keyboard? It's uh, How many songs do you want me to play? All of them? <laughs> yeah, like, you know, so uh, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, I can't wait to come down there. But it's fun. So I go down there. I, I try to remember as much as I can, uh, you know, which by five or six songs. But it's fun to go down there and, and play. Uh, with them, I didn't get to play with them last time when they were down here with uh, ZZ Top, okay. because it wasn't their show, and uh, I we got there late and blah blah blah. But yeah, I usually go up there and play with them. It's it's a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, I really I really like the guys. You know, Tom, Robin, and uh, Rick, and of course Bunny's not playing anymore. They got the Dax mm -hmm. Nielsen, which is Rick's son playing drums, and Dax uh, was taught by Bunny Carlson, uh, Bunny Carlos. Um, he uh, he was taught. Uh, he taught uh, Dax when he was a little kid. Wow! So he's a real good drummer. Wow, that's yeah. good to know. Good to know. Mm -hmm. So now, yeah. So you, I mean, you you do your new stuff and you revisit the old stuff in in a very cool way. Yeah, it's it's strange because I mean, when I'm doing, uh, you mean as far as Cheap Trick or Fraley's comedy, every all every of it. Band, <laughs> That's a different genre. Like my stuff, people don't realize this, but when I joined Fraley's Comet, I was doing a lot heavier stuff, a lot heavier and darker stuff. Very uh, indicative of the song Something Moved. That was real dark. It was even darker, too, when I did a solo thing of it. And then when I joined Fraley's Comet, my stuff wasn't so heavy. I, I had to kind of lighten it up and change it up a little bit. But uh, that's a different type of, of genre as opposed to the cheap trick stuff. But yeah, I, I wrote some songs for Cheap Trick, but they never did them, did oh. any of the songs, including "It's Over Now." I wrote that for Cheap Trick to do back really? in 1986. Yeah, and then uh, when I did stuff for uh, uh, when I I never wrote for Nugent, and then of course Seven Hundred Seven was even lighter stuff, more rock, you know, mainstream rock and roll back then. But my my stuff that I've always wanted to do was more heavy-handed, like. You know Van Halen because I'm I'm California boy. Yes, you and, are. Uh, and I love you know that type of that type of sound and feel and the big rock, the swing and the dance and the I just love that sound. So and my vocals, unfortunately, in my mind I write all this heavy stuff and then I sing it and it's no longer heavy. It's <laughs> it's like okay, uh, you got to bring it down a little bit, you know, and stop singing the tree so much. But you know it, it is my style, it's my character. I really can't change it too much. Uh, but it, it just takes on a whole different character. So, yeah, there's a whole different uh, bunch of genres to try to um, adjust to. Mm -hmm. And then my stuff, the, the heavy rock stuff, is just it's just real heavy with my voice on it. That's what it is. Well, that works. Uh, I think so. I hope I, so. I, so. So now, it's funny. I was going to say, what do you have coming up? But you've sort of been telling us what you have coming up. Um, you can't plan any shows, obviously, for now. So... No, that's sort of pending everything in the world. Yeah, everything is really well for everybody. I mean, it just yeah. I'm, I'm like preaching to the choir here, but everything is up in the air. 
Uh, the bands Four by Fate and and Return of the Comet are pretty much shelved at this point. Uh, I'm not doing anything locally, of course. I'm not going to do anything locally uh, until I get this these projects out. Matter of fact, I've got a, my old guitar player from Coco Blue, uh, who does he he actually co-produced uh, Cold Beach that that off-road video. Okay. Uh, he's a guitar player and and he's phenomenal a guitar player and and he sings he can sing as well, uh, and he's a producer. And we just thought about doing a three piece or maybe a four piece and I would play bass and sing. And we'd have him doing guitar, maybe another guitar player and a drummer doing like uh, uh, some fun stuff like uh, Robin Trower and, and Thin ah. Lizzy, which I love that stuff. Yeah. And that'd be fun to do locally. We still may do that, but we can't do anything here now because of the, uh, the COVID. And then yes. I want to get my project done. Like what I'm doing now, solo wise i want to do before four by fate started that's ah, what, five yeah. years ago so i'm way behind the eight ball because i'd like to get this done before i'm 64 and which i'll be 64 next year so i better hurry up you know well you know come on time's wasting tick tock yes, tick tock <laughs> i didn't know it is i don't even know what day it is uh we lose track don't we yes. we do lose track uh so now it, okay, so for people who are watching um, us speak, is there anything that we don't know about you that you want us to know or that, that we'd be surprised to say, oh, my goodness? Um, well, I, hmm, I don't know. You know, I, I, I told you I was, I was an artist first. I was always drawing in pencils. You owe me a shirt, by the way. You were making shirts. You still owe me a shirt. Okay, yes, go on. I, I got one to somebody else, but I do owe you a shirt. You're right. And that's something else that's going to be on the website. I do want to, because they're fun to do. I mean, those, those are stencil. It's a lot of fun to do those. But, yeah, I was in advanced art classes, art classes, and I did the painting, and I was always doing bands. Uh, I used to be in track, and I was a gymnast and a wrestler because I'm not very tall. I'm 5'7", I'm and but uh, with all the energy, and, and I'm, you know, when I was younger, I was pretty strong and pretty wiry. So I was real good with wrestling and gymnastics and tumbling and sprinting. I was track. I, I used to run track, not a long distance because my lungs uh, with asthma was right. really difficult for the long uh, distance. And there wasn't the medication medication that there is now. But I was a sprinter, relay. I could long jumps and tumbling and all that kind of stuff. So I was very active in that type of thing. Wrestling, I was... I wasn't so good in wrestling. I was, I, I was just strong. Okay. So I would wrestle these guys that were very good, but I was stronger. So I would whip them into submission, and sometimes I'd break fingers, and that oh. was not good. Yeah, I got in trouble for doing that. I mean, I didn't do, do it on purpose, but I was like, you're going down. You oh, know? my gosh. And uh, it, it, so that, you know, I, I gravitated toward, towards motocross. I used to race and ride a lot of amateur motocross uh, all the time doing music. Uh, painting and then that you know uh, everybody I think everybody knows everything I've done it's it's all been out there but uh, just a handyman uh, you know like crude electric construction plumbing roofing wow. cement fences I mean I built walls and mixed cement around here uh, yeah I've done everything because it just you know needs to be done it needs to be done and yep. that's that's how, now if people want to look you up or find out, I know you're rebuilding the website. Where would mm -hmm. they go to look for your records or to see what you're up to uh, until the website's up and going again? Well, as I would, yeah, I'm on uh, I'm on Instagram. Um, I, I yeah, I, I post there occasionally. I guess yeah, maybe you've been not enough. A little more here and there than you had been. You've been a little teeniest bit more active. I yeah, think. I, yeah. I, I try to keep engaged to a certain degree. Facebook is it, and, and like I said, Facebook is it. It's all about my whole life. It's not just about music. So you have to take it with a grain of sand, depending on you know your point of view and perspectives. But they can find out a lot on Facebook. Also, all my tunes, my whole back catalog, I put on to. It's all on. Uh, CD Baby and iTunes. Oh, that's all the babe, all available there. Oh, that's good to um, know. And and as the new stuff will be available there, I'm and I'm going to be printing actual CDs, and I'd like to do some vinyl because that'd be fun. I think some people yes. are into vinyl. Everybody loves vinyl. It's yeah. My son, he's thirty. He'll be thirty-six in October. 
and I remember a few about five six years goes, have you heard vinyl? So have you heard? Yeah, I think he. I, can't, <laughs> I remember how he posed it to me. He said, but vinyl is so cool. You put the re-, and it has this. Oh my gosh. I said, I said, yeah, it's, it's it's analog warmth, son. It has such a nice, warm feel. And he was all into it. I felt so bad that I got rid of all my turntables and stuff <gasps> back in the day. Yeah, not, not smart. But um, he discovered it. A lot of people discovered it. It's a keepsake, you know? Yes, it is. Like, I'm an avid reader, and I've got a huge library, a lot of it, which is packed away right now. But I like to have my physical books. I don't like to do the Kindle or whatever. You know, i got to have the physical book, and it usually has to be hardback. You know. Really? Yeah, I like hardbacks. So. See, I've shifted away a little bit from that just because there's there. I don't have room for them, and because mm-hmm. I yeah. all you know, I write so, and I'm an avid reader as well. So I yeah. will buy yeah. things even if I'm not going to read it, just because I need to have it. Right. I, <laughs> so I sort of shifted away from the hardcovers just because I have no room. Yeah, no, I get that. I'm I'm cluttered here too with all the stuff we have, but yeah, it it's um, it, it's it's a getting getting back to the vinyl and the CDs. Some people are coming back and like to have a physical thing, and, and I like that too. I mean, I, I used to remember when I was when I was a youngin, you know, we get the the album and you open it up and you can read all yes. about Tommy, you know, uh, T Rex and Mark Bolin. I said Tommy Bolin, but that's a different Bolin. Uh, Mark Bolin and T Rex, and you're reading all about it, like, wow, this is such cool stuff, and oh wow, you know, like, and, and now you know people have the a lot of the American public. <laughs> what 10 20 years ago 15 i don't know they i started to acquire the attention span of a gnat yes you know, so they go oh yeah oh uh, yeah what well, next yeah. my son when he was younger he used to listen to stuff uh on the, his, his uh ipod or his, his uh whatever the hell he used to have and he switched songs so quickly i'd be in the back of the car we'd be going to the big river to go uh, in the cabin to snowboard and he was really young, and he'd be playing a song, and they'd play the next song, play that. Would you figure out, just play one song at least? One song, least. yes, yes. No, I don't want to, you know, that type of thing. So, but, ah, you know, I think people are getting back to the, uh, to uh, listening a little bit more, and liking the physical uh, cover and album to look at and read. I agree. I agree completely. Well, oh, that's here very exciting. Alfie. Oh, Alf, okay, good, because yeah. Alfie, Alfie said you're not going to sign off without letting me come on. Uh, <laughs> he said, "He said, Daddy, it's getting, it's getting time." Hi, baby. He's, he's licking Daddy. He is on, a Alfie. good boy. What's hey, Alfie. What's up, What's up there, huh? What's, oh, that's some fantastic <laughs> breath you got, dog. Oh my! He said, "You know what?" He said, "Get off my back. Yeah. I'm tired. You worked me like a dog." You didn't do anything. And- <laughs> all I did was follow me all the way in the back. And I was working on the T-bird a little bit. I had to pull one of the latches off the uh, the hard top because it wasn't springing back. Uh, properly so i had to take it all apart redo the spring and so he's sitting there looking at me while i was in there he's like when are you coming out as soon as i can dog and then he followed me all over the place and i was reparking on a harley trailer to get in a position to put the motor home back and uh finally he just got tired he got on the couch just sat there like and looked at me like just like this like you know if you just sit the hell down for a while maybe uh, you know i could uh, relax a little bit right oh poor baby <laughs> poor little thing it's it's not easy being alfie no, he's got a tough life. Well, I'm gl- I'm glad everybody got to see him because he's just so sweet. Yeah. And um, so, okay, I'm really looking forward to seeing your new stuff. And I hope you will say hello to Valerie for me. I will. I will. And thank you for talking to me. Well, no, thank you for, for uh, you know, we, we've been planning this for a while and I and, uh, haven't gotten around to it because, you know, life gets in the way when you're making other plans. Um, it does. Uh, but that's that's always the case, and I appreciate uh, you know you following it up. We we touch bases, and and I was, I was only way too happy to be here. <laughs> well, I'm thrilled to pieces, and I'll I'll circle back again. Listen, when your website's up and running, when you got your new stuff out, we'll circle back and we'll do it again. We'll do. Thank you so much, and I will definitely get in touch with you, and we will get on this. All righty. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Todd Howarth. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. What's Johnny's son? Uh, what's his name? Richard? Michael. Michael. God, I wasn't even close. Producers, what's Johnny and Michael. Michael. Johnny and Michael. Thanks, Michael. Love you, Todd. No problem. Thanks, Todd. See you. Bye, Johnny. Talk, talk to you later. He said bye. Bye. <laughs>